Hi, I'm Doug Kriebel, and today we're going to talk about net positive suction head. NPSH is one of the most misunderstood terms in the world of pumps. It stands for net positive suction head. There are two NPSHs. NPSH A, which is the net positive suction head available in the system. This is the pressure above vapor pressure of the liquid at its pumping temperature. It's that simple. Now what's vapor pressure? It's the pressure at which a liquid boils at a given temperature. How do you find it? You look it up. The vapor pressures of all liquids are found in the literature at various temperatures. Now what is NPSHR? It is the pressure drop from the inlet of the pump to the eye of the impeller. It's determined by test and it's shown on the pump curve versus flow. NPSH A and NPSH R are expressed in feet of liquid. Obviously, the NPSH A must be greater than the NPSH R. Otherwise, the liquid would form vapor bubbles in the eye of the impeller. This will cause a reduction in performance and also when the pressure in the pump increases above the vapor pressure, the vapor bubbles will collapse, causing noise noise, vibration, and damage to the pump. This is called cavitation. The sketch shows the flow of liquid as it enters the pump. The pressure drops till it meets the eye of the impeller. If it hits the vapor pressure, vapor bubbles form and then as they leave the pump they collapse. The picture shows damage to a lined pump handling acid. Cavitation caused a failure in the lining and the acid ate right through the pump casing. How can you determine your NPSH? In an existing system, just read the suction gauge. Then subtract the vapor pressure. It's that simple. It's the pressure above vapor pressure. For a new system being designed, you have to calculate it. So you take the pressure in your suction vessel, add the static height of the liquid, or subtract it in the case of a lift, subtract the friction loss on the suction side, and then subtract the vapor pressure. Simple. So let's look at some examples. First, an open tank pumping 177 degree water with a water level 10 foot above suction and a calculated 3 foot of pressure loss. Since the tank is atmospheric and at sea level, the pressure is 14.7 PSIA. Convert this to feet of liquid, add the static height, subtract the vapor pressure and the friction losses, convert them to feet of liquid, and what's left is the pressure above vapor pressure, which in this case is 25 feet. Let's look at the same situation, except the tank is now under a pressure of 20 PSIG. If you go through the same calculations, you see the NPSH A is now 73 feet. Again, looking at the same system, everything is the same except the temperature goes up to 260 degrees, which is the boiling temperature of 20 PSIG water. So the water is boiling. And therefore, the 20 PSIG suction pressure is canceled out by the vapor pressure and the NPSH A is only the static height minus friction. This is a very common application in boiler feed water pumps where the suction is from a deaerator which is a boiling vessel. Another would be a condenser where the liquid is condensing. In these cases the NPSH is only the static height minus the vapor pressure. Now let's look at a suction lift application. This is common when you're dewatering pits. First, the pit is open, so the suction pressure is atmospheric. From this, we must subtract the height of the lift, 10 feet, subtract the friction loss, which we calculated as 3 foot, and subtract the vapor pressure, and you have an NPSH of 20 feet. Now, if the same pit, same situation occurs, but the water temperature goes up to 177 degrees Fahrenheit, this has a vapor pressure of 7 PSIA and the NPSH available drops to 5 foot. So let's review some lessons learned. 
Always have as much static head as possible. Locate the pump as close as possible to the suction source to minimize suction friction losses. Be careful of liquids near their boiling point. This is all boiling and condensing applications. And be careful of lifts. Using this information will keep you out of problems when you're designing pumping systems. And if you need help, you can always contact us. Thanks for listening.